Martin. Bonjour à tous. Welcome and thank you for participating in today's technical briefing, which will provide an update on the COVID-19 vaccine rollout in Canada. Bienvenue au brefage technique afin de donner une mise à jour sur la distribution des vaccins contre la COVID-19 au Canada. Today, we will hear remarks from Dr. Howard New and Major General Danny Fortin from the Public Health Agency of Canada. They will be accompanied by Joël Paquette from Public Services and Procurement Canada to answer questions. Aujourd'hui, nous entendrons des allocutions de Dr. Howard New et de Major General Danny Fortin de l'Agence de la santé publique du Canada. Ils seront accompagnés par Joël Paquette de Services publics et approvisionnement Canada pour la période de questions. Following the remarks, we will open the teleconference line for questions from the media. Suite à la présentation, nous répondrons à vos questions. If you wish to ask a question, please press star 1 on your phone. Si vous désirez poser une question, veuillez appuyer sur étoile 1. Procédons à la séance d'information technique. Let's begin today's technical briefing. Over to you, Dr. New. Okay, thank you and merci. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us at today's technical briefing on Canada's COVID-19 vaccine rollout. I'm here with Major General Danny Fortin, Vice President of Operations and Logistics at the Public Health Agency of Canada. To assist us in answering your questions, we have with us Joël Paquette from Public Services and Procurement Canada. As of today, more than 14.5 million COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered in Canada. As of last Saturday, more than 41% of the adult population in Canada has received one dose of the vaccine. Among people 80 years of age or older, 89% has received uh, their first dose and 16% have received their second. And among people 70 to 79 years of age, 86% have received their first dose and 5% have received their second. In younger groups, 71% of those aged 60 to 69 years of age and 43% of those aged 50 to 59 years of age have received their first dose. As of April 30th, there have been 4,548 reports of adverse events following immunization. These include any medical event that occurs following immunization but isn't necessarily related to the vaccine. 748 of these reports, about one in 18,000 doses administered, were considered serious, such as a severe allergic reaction. As of May 6, there have been 11 cases of blood clots with low platelets following receipt of AstraZeneca vaccine in Canada reported to the federal level. Sadly, two additional people from Alberta and New Brunswick following the initial death reported in Quebec have passed away. We offer our sincerest condolences to their loved ones. These adverse events remain rare, and this vaccine is providing protection to many Canadians. There has been a lot of discussion this week about the National Advisory Committee on Immunization, NACI, and its latest recommendation regarding viral vector and mRNA vaccines. The bottom line is, vaccines are essential to ending the pandemic, and the benefits of all vaccines approved in Canada outweigh the risks. They protect us from serious illness and death, along with the very real long-term impacts of COVID-19. I would like to take a moment to reiterate the respective roles of Health Canada, NACI, and the provinces and territories. Health Canada is the regulator that approves individual vaccines and authorizes their use in Canada. NACI, as a technical expert committee, makes recommendations on the use of these vaccines, including the identification of priority groups for vaccination. Provinces and territories then make the policy and rollout decisions about how to best deploy the vaccines in their jurisdictions based on their context and specific circumstances, such as the epidemiological situation. We can see in other countries that high vaccination coverage, together with the maintenance of strong public health measures, have led to decreasing infection, hospitalization, and death rates, and allowed for some easing of public health restrictions, such as in the UK, which has primarily administered millions of doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine to great success. In another, in another development on the vaccine front, yesterday, Health Canada authorized the use of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine in children 12 to 15 years of age after determining it's safe and effective in fighting COVID-19. This is the first COVID-19 vaccine authorized in Canada for use in children and marks a significant milestone in Canada's fight against the pandemic. As vaccine eligibility expands with each passing week, I encourage everyone to get ready for your turn. 
Check out the provincial or local public health website so you know where and when to register, make an appointment, or find a pop-up clinic. Ask people you know if they might need help booking their vaccination. Look for ways you can help your fellow Canadians have a more normal summer. Finally, as a reminder, we need to continue following public health measures like physical distancing, wearing a mask, and of course, getting vaccinated. Thank you. Bonjour à toutes et à tous, et merci de votre présence à la séance d'information technique d'aujourd'hui sur la vaccination contre la COVID-19 au Canada. Je suis accompagné du Major général Danny Fortin, vice-président des opérations et de la logistique à l'Agence de la santé publique du Canada. Joël Paquette, des services publics et approvisionnement Canada, est avec nous pour nous aider à répondre à vos questions. À ce jour, plus de 14,5 millions de doses de vaccins contre la COVID-19 ont été administrées au Canada. En date de samedi dernier, plus de 41 des adultes au Canada avaient reçu une dose de vaccin. Parmi les personnes de 80 ans et plus, 89 ont reçu leur première dose et 16 ont reçu la seconde. Chez les personnes de 70 à 79 ans, ce sont 86 qui ont reçu leur première dose et 5 qui ont reçu la seconde. Pour ce qui est des groupes plus jeunes, 71 des personnes de 60 à 69 ans et 43 de celles de 50 à 59 ans ont reçu leur première dose. En date de 30 avril, 4 548 cas d'événements indésirables suivant la vaccination avaient été signalés, ce qui comprend tout événement médical survenant après la vaccination mais qui n'est pas forcément lié au vaccin. Parmi ces cas, 748 étaient considérés comme étant graves. Une ré réaction allergique grave, par exemple, ce qui équivaut à environ un quart sur 18 000 doses administrées. En date de 6 mai, 11 cas de caillots sanguins combinés à une faible taux de plaquettes sanguines suivant l'administration du vaccin d'AstraZeneca au Canada ont été signalés à l'échelle fédérale. Malheureusement, depuis les décès signalés au Québec, deux autres personnes, en Alberta et au Nouveau-Brunswick, sont décédées. Nous adressons nos plus sincères condoléances à leurs proches. Ces effets indésirables restent rares et ce vaccin procure une protection à un grand nombre de Canadiens. Il a beaucoup été question cette semaine du Comité consultatif national de l'immunisation, ou CCNI, et de, de ses dernières recommandations relatives au vaccin à vecteur viral et au vaccin à ARN messager. Ce qu'il faut retenir, c'est que pour mettre fin à la pandémie, il faut des vaccins et que les avantages de tous les vaccins approuvés au Canada l'emportent sur les risques. Ils nous protègent contre les maladies graves et la mort, ainsi que contre les effets très réels et à long terme de la COVID-19. Je profite de l'occasion pour réitérer les rôles respectifs de Santé Canada, du CCNI, ainsi que des provinces et des territoires. Santé Canada est l'organisme de réglementation qui approuve les vaccins et qui en autorise l'utilisation au Canada. Le CCNI, à titre de comité d'experts techniques, fait des recommandations sur l'utilisation de ces vaccins et établit notamment les groupes à qui les vaccins devraient être donnés en priorité. Par la suite, les gouvernements provinciaux et territoriaux prennent les décisions relatives aux politiques et aux programmes de vaccination pour déployer les vaccins de la façon qui convient le mieux pour leur territoire en se fondant sur le contexte et leurs circonstances particulières, notamment la situation épidémiologique. Nous avons pu constater qu'ailleurs dans le monde, la couverture vaccinale étendue ainsi que le maintien de robustes mesures sanitaires ont mené à une baisse des taux d'infection, d'hospitalisation et de décès et ont permis un certain allègement des mesures sanitaires, notamment au Royaume-Uni, où des millions de doses de vaccins d'AstraZeneca ont surtout, surtout été administrées avec de très bons résultats. Il y a une autre avance en ce qui a trait au vaccin. En effet, Santé Canada a autorisé hier l'utilisation du vaccin de Pfizer-BioNTech chez les enfants de 12 à 15 ans après avoir conclu qu'ils étaient sûrs et efficaces pour protéger contre la maladie. 
Il s'agit du premier vaccin contre la COVID-19 dont l'utilisation chez les enfants est autorisée au pays, ce qui marque une étape cruciale dans la lutte du Canada contre la pandémie. Comme l'admissibilité au vaccin s'élargit de semaine en semaine, j'encourage tous les Canadiens à être prêts à recevoir le vaccin quand ce sera leur tour. Rendez-vous sur le site Web de votre province ou de votre autorité de santé publique locale pour savoir quand et comment vous inscrire, prendre un rendez-vous ou trouver une clinique temporaire. Demandez à vos connaissances si elles ont besoin d'aide pour réserver leur vaccination. Cherchez des moyens d'aider vos concitoyens canadiens à passer une été qui ressemble plus à une unité normale. Pour terminer, j'aimerais faire un tout petit rappel. Nous devons continuer d'appliquer les mesures de santé publique comme la distanciation physique, le port de masque et bien sûr la vaccination. J'invite maintenant le major général Fortin à prendre la parole. Merci. Merci, Dr. Nua. Um, so, good afternoon, everyone. So, to date, we have distributed over 18 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines to provinces and territories. Earlier this week, we received 2 million doses of Pfizer-BioNTech the largest shipment from this manufacturer to date, and deliveries to provinces are now complete. As for Moderna, yesterday we received more than 1 million doses ahead of schedule. Uh, the shipment was originally set to arrive in country and distributed into next week. Deliveries to provinces and territories are underway, uh, which will provide them with the opportunity to administer these doses into the coming days and into next week. Moving forward, we continue to expect weekly shipments of Uh, over 2 million doses from Pfizer-BioNTech uh, over the course of month of uh, this month and over 2.4 million a week in June. For the week of, 17, of May 17, uh, we can expect to receive 1 million doses from Moderna and we continue to work with Moderna to determine upcoming delivery schedules. And we now have visibility uh, for AstraZeneca doses Uh, from the COVAX facility, we can expect to receive 655,000 um, uh, 65, doses uh, in the coming weeks using our contracted logistics service provider, FedEx and Omar. Addition, additional detail will be shared on the shipment uh, when it's available. And in closing, vaccine rollout continues with the sustained arrival of authorized vaccine into Canada. Uh, we have now reached that big lift period uh, where weekly deliveries are uh, more significant, and this should bring us to approximately 25 million doses by the end of May. Uh, bon après-midi à tous et à toutes. Alors, uh, à ce jour, nous avons distribué plus de 18 millions de doses des vaccins contre la COVID-19 aux provinces et aux territoires. Plus tôt cette semaine, nous avons reçu 2 millions de doses de Pfizer-BioNTech, la plus grande quantité expédiée par le fabricant à ce jour. Les livraisons aux provinces sont maintenant terminées. En ce qui concerne Moderna, nous avons reçu hier plus d'un million de doses, une semaine avant la date prévue. Les livraisons aux provinces et aux territoires euh, sont en cours et ces derniers euh, pourront donc administrer les doses au cours des prochains jours et au cours de la prochaine semaine. Pour ce qui est de la suite des choses, nous prévoyons toujours recevoir des livraisons hebdomadaires de plus de 2 millions de doses de Pfizer-BioNTech au cours du mois de mai et de 2,4 millions par semaine euh, au cours du mois de juin. Pour la semaine du 17 mai, nous pouvons euh, nous attendre à recevoir environ 1 million de doses de Moderna et nous continuons à, à collaborer avec le fabricant pour déterminer les prochains horaires de livraison. Nous en savons maintenant un peu plus sur euh, les doses AstraZeneca provenant de COVAX. Euh, nous pouvons nous attendre à recevoir 655 000 doses au cours des prochaines semaines en utilisant notre fournisseur de services logistiques contractuels, FedEx et Nomar. Nous, nous, nous euh, communiquerons d'autres détails euh, sur cet envoi lorsque nous en saurons davantage. C'est toujours en euh, coordination. Pour terminer, la vaccination se poursuit euh, grâce à l'arrivée soutenue des vaccins autorisés au Canada. Nous avons maintenant atteint une période encourageante où les livraisons euh, hebdomadaires sont de plus en plus importantes. Nous devrions, attendre, euh, devrions nous attendre, nous devrions atteindre pardon, plus de 25 millions de doses d'ici la fin du mois de mai. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. We will now open the phone line to questions. We ask that you limit yourself to one question and only one follow-up 
We will be taking your questions in both official languages. Nous vous demandons de vous limiter à une question et seulement une question suivie. Vous pouvez poser vos questions dans l'une ou l'autre des langues officielles. We will start with the first question. Première question, opérateur. Thank you. Merci. Please press star 1 at this time if you have a question. S'il vous plaît, appuyez sur étoile 1 maintenant pour poser une question. The first question is from, la première question est de, Mia Robson, the Canadian Press. Please go ahead, à vous la parole. Yes, hi. Um, I'm wondering if you, with this, those new doses of AstraZeneca that you're talking about coming from COVAX or any other doses coming, is there going to be a change in how they're distributed based on NACI's advice that places with low rates of infection might not want to use them? Um, are there provinces that are saying they don't want any more doses of AstraZeneca, or will this have any impact on how those doses are distributed? Yeah, the plan at this time is to continue to distribute on a per capita basis to all provinces. Uh, the territories still have an ability to uh, signal whether or not they uh, want to uh, receive those doses in the in the future. Uh, so we intend to continue with that uh, that approach. And at this time, we have not received indications from uh, any jurisdiction, federal or provincial, uh, that they they would want to alter that uh, that distribution model at this time. It's Dr. Thank New. You. Maybe maybe I can maybe I can add to that. It's Dr. New. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, based on uh, the, the current uh, recommendation for, for AstraZeneca as a two-dose regime, uh, the thinking and planning is that uh, uh, obviously uh, uh, looking at the provincial sort of uh, administration of the AstraZeneca vaccine, everyone who's received you know that first dose, obviously, and that's great because uh, they've they've obviously protected themselves, uh, their families, loved ones, and even others in the community in terms of. Uh, decreasing the risk of community transmission. But uh, the thinking and planning is that uh, uh, the shipping of the AstraZeneca doses uh, would be there to obviously uh, offer that, quote, second dose of the two-dose regime. Thank you for that. Um, and I'm also wondering if you can just talk a little bit about this ramp up of, of both deliveries and vaccinations. Most provinces are now expanding their eligibility. Some are going right to mm -hmm. right down to 12 years old. Um, and it seems like there might be sort of this, this rush now to get appointments. Do we actually have the vaccines coming to vaccinate everybody down to the age of 12 with one dose by the end of June, as we hoped? Is that still, uh, are we still getting enough vaccine to do that? Uh, well, we're definitely getting uh, an increase, increasing amount of vaccines. Uh, as I as I laid out, uh, we expect to have 25 million by um, by the end of this month. More coming in June, as I as I explained, with a very regular flow of Pfizer, uh, more Moderna coming, AstraZeneca, and others. So uh, so, I think if we uh, look in the coming uh, weeks and months, we'll have uh, sufficient. Uh, quantity of doses for provinces and territories to mm -hmm. offer a vaccine to all those uh, Canadians who want it, uh, perhaps sooner than originally anticipated. But we keep a close eye on that. Uh, provinces and territories keep a close eye on their throughput, and they're significantly increasing their ability to administer uh, at scale uh, with new pharmacies being onboarded, with new uh, modalities being put in place, drive throughs uh, walk-in clinics, so the, the throughput is uh, increasing across the board. Yeah, and Dr. New, maybe we can add to that. I, I think it, it was, uh, as I said in my uh, opening remarks, I think a crucial milestone with uh, Health Canada approving the use of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine for uh, individuals aged 12 to 15. And you can see uh, the province and territories, or at least several of them, uh, are, are looking at that. Uh, uh, some of them have already announced uh, in terms of eligibility and uh, offering the vaccine to uh, to uh, adolescents 12 to 15 years of age. So uh, I think it's very optimistic. Uh, I, I think everywhere, everywhere across the country, I think there's this... Uh, I think there's new energy and there's new optimism, you know, as we're we're getting more vaccines, uh, you know, into the country. And then also, also uh, provinces ramping up uh, their vaccination efforts to, as they say, the overall national goal has always been to, uh, you know, vaccinate as many eligible Canadians as soon as possible. So I think uh, we're on track and I think it bodes well for the summer. Merci beaucoup, Dr. New. Prochaine question. Thank you. Merci. The next question is from La Prochaine Question est de... Raymond Fillon de TVA, please go ahead, à vous la parole. Merci, bon après-midi. J'aimerais savoir si les 655 000 doses, Major général, d'AstraZeneca, vous avez parlé des prochaines semaines, mais est-ce qu'on doit les compter dans le lot qui est attendu avant la fin du mois de mai? Uh, 
Alors, on est toujours en train de travailler euh, avec euh, COVAX euh, pour euh, finaliser les détails, les détails de livraison. Euh, on s'attend à avoir euh, une confirmation de date très bientôt. Alors, pour l'instant, je ne peux pas m'avancer sur une date exacte. Euh, on travaille que ce soit en mai. Ce sera au cours des prochaines semaines. Et dès qu'on aura l'information, on va communiquer cette information-là au public. D'accord. Et là, vous parlez d'un montant à la fin du mois de... Je n'ai pas le, le chiffre avec moi, là, pour la fin du mois de mai. Mais combien, à combien de doses on est rendu qu'on attend en date du 30 juin? Et est-ce que vous êtes en mesure de nous dire que l'objectif d'avoir assez de vaccins pour vacciner complètement tous les Canadiens d'ici septembre, est-ce qu'on peut dire qu'il va être devancé maintenant en raison de ces doses qui entrent plus rapidement que prévu? Alors, je faisais des, euh, des mathématiques rapides du oui. coin de napkin, <rire> Raymond. Je, je pense qu'on a une autre quinzaine de millions, certainement, au mois de juin. Euh, ce qui me manque, c'est des détails. Ce qui nous manque, c'est des détails de livraison sur euh, AstraZeneca, Janssen et autres. Alors, euh, ça, 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 ça s'ajoutera aux, aux quantités que je viens d'annoncer. On, euh, on a indiqué par le passé qu'à la fin du deuxième trimestre, on va dépasser le 40 millions. Alors, euh, moi, c'est toujours euh, ce, ces chiffres-là avec lesquels on travaille pour l'instant. Mais pouvez-vous nous dire si on va dépasser l'objectif de septembre, le devancer? Euh, L'objectif étant de, de, de donner une première dose ou d'avoir euh, la totalité, ou plutôt le, les deux doses euh, aux Canadiens. Je pense, qu a, je pense que ce serait prudent de continuer de maintenir que la population adulte et maintenant les adolescents seront en mesure euh, d'avoir un vaccin et d'avoir les deux doses euh, d'ici septembre, comme il a été mentionné à plusieurs reprises. Je pense que, Dr. Nou, c'est la même chose euh, qu'on a annoncé dans plusieurs euh, tables puis à euh, plusieurs reprises. Et puis, euh, certainement, tout s'aligne pour qu'on soit capable de rencontrer cet objectif. Merci beaucoup, Major Général. Prochaine question. Thank you. Merci. The next question is from... La prochaine question est de Kevin Gallagher de CD, CTV National News. Please go ahead. À vous la parole. Hi there. Thanks for taking my question. I just actually want to follow up on Mia Rabson's question from earlier, where she asked if there were actually enough doses to vaccinate everybody uh, by the end of June, if you're including this new cohort uh, for Pfizer, right, for, for adolescents from 12 to 15. Um, so, yeah, I am curious, you know, when you're doing projections for how many doses we're trying to acquire and for how those doses will be distributed to the population, was the 12 to 15 cohort considered in, say, the projections that we've heard from uh, Dr. Tam last week for getting 75% of, uh, you know, Canadians their first shot, for example, um, by a certain time. So I'm just curious as to know how that new cohort that's been approved now affects the numbers game for mm -hmm. the doses that come in and how they're distributed. It's Dr. New. Maybe you can start because obviously I was there with Dr. Tam for the uh, sort of the, you know the initial modeling and so on. And uh, I would say that uh, the modeling uh, projections at that time certainly was based on what the current situation was that, at that point. And that it was uh, basically a, a model uh, using sort of the adult population eligible because obviously the decision by Health Canada in terms of approving uh, the Pfizer BioNTech uh, vaccine uh, was only made yesterday. So just to, just to answer that question, yes, the modeling, uh, you know, hopefully. Uh, trying to reach 75% uh, of uh, eligible adults uh, with at least one dose uh, was based on, on, on the population uh, of, uh, of those over 18. Now with the, the 12 to 15, uh, uh, just doing uh, sort of the, 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 the calculations, I certainly I turned over to Major General Fortin, but uh, that would add about an additional 1.63 million uh, individuals to fall into that category as part of our calculations in terms of uh, the addition, you know, obviously the doses required for Pfizer or BioNTech to give, uh, offer those individuals that first dose. So I think I'll turn it over to Major General Fortin uh, at this point. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. New. I would simply add uh, 1.63 million um, dollars since is, is less than a week's worth of uh, Pfizer doses. So, uh, um, there will be sufficient vaccines in country mm -hmm. to vaccinate um, earlier than initially anticipated with the first dose. All those Canadians who want to have it, uh, it will be offered. And it's a matter of the provinces and territories executing that plan uh, smoothly. And uh, they will, they've already shared some 
uh, different timelines for meeting that objective. So I would defer to those individual provinces and territories to report on when they expect to have that cohort and, and the rest of the Canadian uh, adult population vaccinated with a first dose. Just to follow up on the AstraZeneca coming from the COVAX, um, with NACI's, uh sort of recommendation that seemed to prioritize Pfizer and Moderna over AstraZeneca for some Canadians in certain hotspot regions, let's say, um, you know, depending on where you are, I guess, whether you get AstraZeneca or preferably, right? I know that um, there's a certain stance on, you know, take the first shot that's available, but is there now less of uh, a, an effort to get the total COVAX doses? Is there is there going to be an issue with supply as well coming from India when we're talking about AstraZeneca moving forward? Uh, it, it's Dr. New, I'm not sure. It's sort of a, maybe a, a two-part question. If you're looking at the supply logistics, certainly we turn it to Major General Danny Fortin and also Joel Paquette. But if you're looking in terms of, uh, you know, the issue, and I, I think you're hinting at it always, there may be a, a, a less of a sort of, a, you know, what's the word, uh, a demand or maybe some hesitancy for AstraZeneca. What I can say is that, you know, what we said uh, all along, you know, the, the goal is to uh, vaccinate as many Canadians as soon as possible with uh, approved vaccines. And uh, the four approved vaccines by Health Canada, uh, certainly uh, based on the clinical trials, were all shown to be effective in preventing serious illness and death. And that's been borne out in the real life, uh, real world experience. Uh, if you're looking around the world uh, in terms of those uh, vaccines, uh, all the vaccines uh, being uh, being used and the ones that also here in Canada, we're still obviously waiting for the, for the Janssen vaccine. But uh, the three to date, I think, uh, uh, you know, they, they They've, they've uh, been very effective in preventing uh, serious illness and death. And so I think, you know, what, what Nasty said, you know, uh, just putting it uh, sort of in context, is that they, from a technical point of view, in terms of an open, transparent, uh, I would say a risk assessment, uh, looking at the data to date, the fact that there's been a safety signal that's, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's been uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, detected. And I think that actually is also credit to uh, the very good, I would call it, uh, post-marketing or, or, you know, surveillance systems both here in Canada, in the U.S., and also uh, in countries in Europe. Uh, because of that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Health Canada uh, did their job. They looked at the, the, the data. They looked at it uh, along with other regulators. And uh, based on that, uh, overall, they, they, uh, they concluded that the uh, uh, benefits still outweigh the risk. And uh, the, the, what they've done is obviously adjusted the product monograph to make it clear. So in terms of, uh, you know, uh, informed decision-making, that information is now part of the product monograph. Now, NASI actually uh, also took uh, the, the, you know, a look at the data, and they came up with uh, their technical recommendations. But as we all know, at the end of the day, it's the provinces and territories. They take all of that information uh, from NASI and so on, look at their provincial context, epidemiology and so on, uh, look at the vaccines at their disposal, the tools in the toolbox to, to make uh, the, the best use. Uh, every vaccine uh, has, you know, obviously it, it's a uh, certain advantages. For example, you know, Janssen, uh, maybe uh, the, the one dose uh, uh, makes it easier to, to vaccinate certain groups where it might be a more difficult to uh, give them their second dose. Uh, you know, uh, AstraZeneca, I think the refrigeration requirements are not as stringent as maybe the mRNA vaccines. Uh, that's all part of the mix that uh, the provinces and territories look at. And so uh, at the end of the day, you know, uh, I think uh, Canadians can rest assured that, you know, in whatever province or territory uh, they're in, uh, there's been thoughtful thinking by the chief medical officers of health and all the other folks uh, involved in the planning the vaccination rollout in their jurisdiction. And so when they go out to get uh, their vaccine, the one that's offered to them is, is the right one. And I think uh, the other point, of course, is that uh, with the information out there, uh, we all uh, recognize that uh, uh, information is important and that has to be a good informed consent so that uh, everyone feels comfortable in terms of the decision they make uh, regarding the vaccine to receive. So hopefully that helps in, in terms of the context of NACI, uh, provinces, territories, and Health Canada. And for the uh, supply logistical aspects, I'll pass it on to my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you for uh, Dr. New. Um, for the AstraZeneca, we have a um, advanced purchase agreement with them for 20 million doses. We've received 1.5 million through um, an exchange with the United States. Uh, we're continuing to have discussions with the United States for a possible uh, further exchange. We're also expecting 1 million doses through that particular agreement starting in June. We have 2 million doses through the Serum Institute of India, of which we've received 500,000. 
and we're expecting 1.5 million more. And we're working with the Serum Institute to determine when that will receive uh, those doses. And we've received uh, over 300,000 doses from COVAX, and we're expecting another 655,000 before the end of this month. So all in all, we're getting uh, quite a bit of AstraZeneca doses that we'll be uh, able to administer to Canadians. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Thank you. Merci. The next question is from La prochaine question est de Mylène Crête de Le Devoir. Please go ahead. À vous la parole. Bonjour. J'aimerais savoir quand vous attendez la décision pour euh, l'autorisation du vaccin de Moderna pour les adolescents de 12 à 15 ans. Uh, C'est Dr. New. Uh, Peut-être uh, moi, je vais uh, répondre aux questions. Uh, on sait qu'à plusieurs fabricants avec le vaccin, ils sont en train de, 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 de faire de, comme des, des essais cliniques. On attend des résultats, mais c'est vraiment pour le, le, les, 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 nos, nos collègues à Santé Canada pour, 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 pour attendre une soumission de, 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 de la compagnie. Et puis après, c'est toujours une, leur, leur, leur responsabilité, on peut dire, leur mandat pour analyser la, la soumission avec les données probantes pour pour, pour peut-être donner une approbation. Donc, je ne peux pas dire plus à, à date, c'est ça la situation, la situation. Merci. Et je me demandais, dans la même veine, est-ce qu'on peut, est qu peut espérer pouvoir vacciner les enfants de moins de 12 ans, peut-être même pour la rentrée scolaire? C'est Dr. New, oui, c'est le même genre de question. Merci pour la question. Euh, oui, euh, moi, moi je, je sais que euh, les plusieurs euh, compagnies fabricantes euh, des, des vaccins aussi sont en train de, 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 voir, de, 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 de continuer avec le, leur essai clinique, même pour les enfants moins de 12 ans. Donc, euh, c'est une question d'attendre les résultats de, 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 des essais cliniques, les données probantes, et c'est comme ça avec euh, la soumission aux au, euh, organismes réglementaires, euh, je pense peut-être dans plusieurs pays, mais ici au Canada, c'est à Santé Canada, pour, euh, pour euh, leur analyse et leur, euh, euh, leur peut -être, peut -être, peut -être, potentiellement approbation. Mais euh, c'est trop tôt pour, pour euh, comme dit, euh, spéculer qu'est-ce qui va se passer. C'est vraiment une question d'attendre les résultats des, des essais cliniques et puis euh, euh, qu'est-ce que les compagnies veulent faire avec une soumission à Santé Canada. Merci beaucoup. Prochaine question. Thank you. Merci. The next question is from la prochaine question est de Ryan Tomalty, National Post. Please go ahead. À vous la parole. Yeah. Hi there. Um, I'm wondering um, what sort of measures you're putting in place um, with the Pfizer deliveries coming so heavy now and so many Canadians getting Pfizer for their first dose. Um, I know there's the potential of mixing and matching, but I know those studies aren't done. So what sort of measures are you taking in place uh, to ensure that uh, Pfizer will be available for someone's second dose? Is there going to be a point at which you recommend to provinces to stop offering it to people for their first dose? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I start. I don't know. It's... Uh... Thank you very much. An interesting question. Uh, you know, it, it, obviously, it's a, it's a logistical one. Uh, certainly, from a public health perspective, what I what I can say is that uh, uh, the, the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine is, is the only one approved for adolescents at 12 to 15. Uh, as, as Major General Fortin said, uh, that's not really that many, uh, you know, Canadians. You know, that's 1.63 uh, million, and uh, his, he pointed out that's sort of like you know a week's worth or, or so uh, of, of vaccine doses. So, uh, based on that, and also, also sort of uh, the, the anticipated, but also to date, you know, the very sort of stable delivery of the uh, the weekly shipments of Pfizer BioNTech. Uh, I think the provinces are, are taking into account and. Uh, and the fact that as part of their planning, uh, you could see several provinces have already uh, uh, opened up the eligibility to, to even offer it to, to uh, uh, individuals 12 to 15 years of age. Uh, uh, I, I can't speak for the provinces and territories, but it appears that, uh, that that's in hand in terms of uh, obviously uh, the logistical aspects and the planning for, for the vaccination programs. But I, I think I'll turn it over, obviously, to uh, Major General Fortin uh, as, and maybe Joel Paquette, if you would like to add something as well. 
Yeah, what I, what I would uh, what I would tell you is uh, uh, provinces and territories have a good handle on what they need, and they uh, keep tabs on who's getting which vaccine. And in, in, in the discussions that we're having uh, very regularly, uh, of course, we're uh, probably only um, starting to do. Um, you know, deliberate planning on second doses. I mean, there are provinces that are booking appointments for second doses. Others, they will book that uh, a little bit later as they go through, um, as they, as they move forward. But they keep tabs. They are uh, hard at uh, hard at it, ensuring that we have um, the right uh, doses for the right people. So, in our conversations, uh, this would come up: When can we expect to have AstraZeneca? When can we expect to have Moderna? And they build their plans around that, and we continue to to work to provide them as much visibility as possible on that. So, uh, um, I, I think at this time everybody's working on a very deliberate plan, making sure that the uh, people get the right uh, the right uh, vaccine when they're supposed to receive it. Maybe I can just ask this question a different way uh, for better clarity, because I know it's a complicated issue, but. My understanding is we have a contract for about 44 million uh, doses of the Pfizer vaccine to arrive before September. I know they're arriving uh, at a much faster rate than any of our other vaccines. Uh, I'm wondering if you're going to tell the provinces uh, once we clear half the halfway point, I guess, you know, 22 million uh, to hold on to the other doses uh, for, for second doses uh, rather than have sort of a situation where we'd you know, give too many Pfizer do doses uh, as first doses and not have enough for the second ones. Merci. Prochaine question. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's it's a doctor. You maybe I'll, I'll att attempt to answer that. You're right. It's uh, maybe um maybe sorry, maybe it's myself not answer maybe understanding the question. But uh, uh, I think um, the strategy in Canada to date overall has been to. Uh, vaccinate as many Canadians as possible with that one dose strategy and uh, based on, on sort of the, the, the best, the latest, uh, obviously, data available in terms of uh, stretching the dose interval up to, but it doesn't have to be up to four months. And certainly uh, based on, on the scheduled delivery and the fact that we're getting many more millions of doses of Pfizer uh, uh, into the country, I think uh, from what I understand from the provinces and territories that uh, uh, they're, 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 they have the, the planning in hand to uh, offer everyone uh, sort of the, the first doses and, and I guess anticipating that, uh, you know, obviously based on the regular uh, scheduling, that uh, it's not about holding back doses. I think we all, all want to, you know, get, as they say, uh, vaccines into arms as soon as possible. So the fact that they've opened up several provinces, the eligibility to uh, adolescents as well, I think it's 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 part of that strategy to uh, vaccinate uh, as many Canadians who are eligible to get that, that first dose. And then uh, uh, obviously then uh, uh, going with the second dose. So I, I don't think uh, it's part of the thinking planning that they're going to hold back doses. I think it's all about getting a uh, as many Canadians as possible vaccinated with uh, with the first dose, and certainly based on uh, you know what uh, what uh, planning has been done to date and, and the actual uh, stability of the shipments from Pfizer, uh, I think uh, it's in hand in terms uh, of uh, being able to provide uh, uh, the Canadians then with their second dose. I'm not sure is that is that what you were, were looking for? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you, Dr. New. Question, question. Thank you. Merci. Once again, please press star 1 if you have a question. De nouveau, n'hésitez pas à appuyer sur étoile 1 pour toute question. The next question is from, la prochaine question est de Tom Perry, CBC News. Please go ahead, à vous la parole. Hello, uh, thanks for taking our questions. Dr. New, I'd like to ask you a question about um, vaccine passports. Uh, Quebec announced today that it's going to be rolling out a digital proof of vaccination with a QR code attached to it. I'm wondering if you think this should be a model that, that other provinces might follow. It's interesting. Thank you very much for the question. So uh, when we're talking about, uh, I think, you know, vaccine certificates, vaccine passports, uh, certainly my thinking, I think also with uh, with others at the agency in working uh, even internationally, is that uh, we separate in terms of uh, 
uh, what it might mean in terms of crossing international borders. And I think I, if, if you're fine, we won't go there. You know, obviously, uh, uh, lots of thinking, lots of discussion happening in terms of, uh, you know, the requirements in terms of uh, traveling abroad, uh, you know, uh, uh, what would happen in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of standardization, uh, lots of issues to work through. Uh, uh, obviously, one of the issues I think uh, applies as well domestically is I think that the issue of equity, right? Uh, you know, obviously, uh, many uh, countries uh, probably are not able to vaccinate their, their populations, uh, you know, as quickly or to the same degree as Canada, you know, where we're lucky here. So uh, with that, you know, uh, requiring citizens of one country to have, quote, a vaccine passport to be able to travel to another country and so on, that that's something I think that's also looked at. So I, I would say in that space, uh, you know, the, the quicker and, and the you know, most more you know, rapidly we can uh, provide uh, you know, equitable access to, to vaccines around the world to citizens uh, everywhere, I think, uh, is, is, is important. You know, you know we're not, uh, none of us are protected till all of us are protected. So I think that, that, that that's an important principle to, to, uh, to keep in mind. Domestically, uh, certainly what uh, you, you mentioned in terms of Quebec and what they're doing, yes, I think uh, that that's something that uh, uh, is, is, I think, being looked at in obviously uh, several jurisdictions. Uh, we're also obviously uh, uh, quite engaged at the federal level, um, but as I mentioned before at, at previous uh, sort of uh, press conferences, uh, there are lots of issues to look at, you know, in terms of uh, what does that mean? Uh, what are sort of the uh, the uses of, of someone uh, having a certificate or sort of an indication that they've been vaccinated, hopefully, like I say, uh, quite soon with the two doses? Uh, uh, you know, in terms of equity, uh, you know, stigma, discrimination, I would say even from a pure technical scientific point of view, uh, if we're also obviously still, uh, uh, I say, worried or concerned about the ongoing community transmission, uh, we have to keep in mind that uh, you have to maintain the public health measures. It's not vaccination alone that's going to get us out of this. Uh, and to that point, then, uh, the fact is that we still don't know in terms of uh, long lasting or what the, the duration of immunity is. So so someone might get their, their two doses, you know, have a certificate that well, what does it mean, uh, you know, six months from now, a year from now, and so on and so forth? And the fact is that we know no vaccine is 100% effective. And so, uh, you know, the fact is that uh, there, there are people going to be walking around having maybe received a full uh, two-dose regimen, let's say, in the, in the, for the vaccines that require our two doses, uh, that uh, may still be susceptible to, you know, COVID-19 and then also be able to transmit to others. So even technically, uh, there are some obviously... Uh, uh, some uh, scientific issues to, to look at. And then, of course, as I said, the ethical and, and all those other things are also something that needs to be looked at as well. Thank you. And and just as a follow-up, can I just double check? I, I heard some, uh, there was some talk earlier about um, U.S. doses or potential U.S. doses of, of AstraZeneca. Uh, I heard someone reference a million doses in June. I assume that's from the Serum Institute in India that we're talking about. Is there any further update on p us potentially uh, borrowing uh, more AstraZeneca doses uh, from the United States uh, anytime soon? Thank you for the question. Uh, what I was referring to was our 20 million um, advanced purchase agreement with AstraZeneca, and we are still uh, working with the United States on a potential exchange. And the 1 million would be through um, our uh, APA with AstraZeneca. So the 1 million in June is that, not the Serum Institute of uh, India. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Thank you. Merci. The next question is from La Prochaine Question et de Marc Villani from CDV News Calgary. Please go ahead. À vous la parole. Hi there. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, the Prime Minister talked with Alberta Premier Jason Kenney and both Calgary and Edmonton mayors recently saying that the feds are willing to assist as we experience uh, the highest case numbers per capita in North America here in the province of Alberta. Wondering if we will see increased shipments of vaccine doses to Alberta as a result, especially as we have just expanded vaccinations to that uh, millennial group. It's Dr. New. Maybe I, I can start, uh, and then uh, Major General Fortin can add. Uh, yeah, certainly the situation in Alberta is quite serious. You know, I think uh, as you pointed out that they have a very, very high infection rates. Uh, their their healthcare system is uh, obviously beginning to be. Uh, overloaded and so on. But uh, as I've said uh, previously, uh, vaccines alone are, are not the silver bullet. It's not uh, what's going to get us out of the situation. You know, even uh, if you, you were to give a vaccine to an individual, it takes several weeks for immunity to develop, uh, 
and so on and so forth. And so uh, we all recognize that uh, really what, what's needed at the present time is strong public health measures, both in terms of individual behaviors, you know, the uh, wearing of the face mask, uh, not uh, not mixing with others outside of your household, uh, good hand hygiene, uh, you know, and so on. We, we all know that. The, um, and beyond that, obviously, uh, governments, I think, uh, have a role to play because at, at the population level, you know, even if uh, someone uh, uh, is well-meaning and wants to, to do all the right things in terms of, you know, uh, the, the, the physical distancing and, and the face mask, uh, you know, and so on, uh, as we all know, uh, some essential workers, based on their circumstances, it's not it's not easy. You can't take a day off work. You don't have maybe uh, the social supports, you know, the sick, uh, sick days and so on. So I think uh, those are things that also need to be looked at in terms of providing supports for for, for essential workers and, and others who are not able to uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, follow all of the uh, good uh, sort of personal public health measures that that, that they would like to. Um, other than that, uh, like I say, there's always that, that delay aspect uh, uh, in terms of when you implement strong public health measures or even vaccination, it'll take uh, a few weeks a a after that to, to actually see any impact. So right now, I, I would say that uh, uh, most of the uh, support that the maybe Alberta might uh, be requiring are, are things that uh, uh, you know, might be a more maybe equipment or sort of things related to the healthcare system. But I would say that uh, uh, as the federal government, uh, I can't speak for, for the whole range of, uh, of supports, but certainly we're always open uh, uh, to listen to any request. And then we'll, we'll obviously uh, uh, get into the details and see what we can do uh, in terms of any type of uh, support and assistance that the federal government could provide to the, to the province of Alberta. And with that, uh, maybe I'll turn it over to Major General Falk Tang. Yes, thank you. Maybe just a quick comment. Uh, over the last several weeks, we saw numbers increase with Pfizer and Moderna and others. And uh, and so um, there were discussions through various tables, and we solicited the input of provinces and territories, uh, the Special Advisory Committee on uh, COVID, for instance, and, and the CIC, uh, Immunization Committee. Um, and uh, for a number of reasons, um, looking at uh, hot spots in different locations in the country, and more to come. Um, the decision uh, the decision was was made for every uh, vaccine to continue with a per capita uh, distribution on a per capita basis. We revisited that with more moderna, and that was the decision that was made in the end. We revisited that with uh, Johnson and Johnson and the same decision. We came to the same dis uh, decision. For a number of reasons, uh, this is um, we don't have a federal reserve that we can tap into to cover uh, on short notice a particular area, uh, Alberta or another uh, jurisdiction. Um, we don't want to hold on to doses for that eventuality. We want to push those doses out to provinces and territories for those jurisdictions to administer those doses. So the best way we can help at this time without taking from one province to give to another is to continue on pace and produce as much or provide as much clarity as possible to provinces and territories so that they can plan, make adjustments. And Alberta has been uh, making uh, huge adjustments to its distribution uh, with the number of vaccines, uh, with the number of pharmacies onboarded uh, starting this week, tripled from the previous week, and, uh, and various other modalities are expanding. Follow up, Mark? No, thank you very much. Parfait, merci. Um, that will be all for today's technical briefing. C'est ce qui m'est fait au brefage technique pour aujourd'hui. Merci beaucoup d'avoir été avec nous et bonne soirée.